This is like slightly spooky. Right. Hey guys, and welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Larry Casilla from AmmoNYC.com. Now today is going to be insane. We're meeting up with a man named Bobby the Auto King. Now he supplies all the cars to movies that we watch. So you're sitting home watching Netflix and you see a car drive. I'm like, oh, that thing's awesome. There's actually a company that supplies that to the producer of the film. It's super cool. Do you happen to have a jet ski that's like attached to the ceiling <laughs> or a, a ski do by chance? Well, up on top. Oh my gosh. That's, we're going to be heading over to his facility. He has hundreds of cars that need to be worked on or cleaned and we're gonna get a few of them prepared for an upcoming episode on netflix it's gonna be awesome today on this episode of driver tech Big thank you to my sponsor, Shopify, for not only helping me run AmmoNYC.com's website, but for giving us the opportunity to travel to find cars and stories like this one here. More on this later. And Jaws is coming, he's got that cracker, and he goes like that. And the line starts to go, click, click, click. And I watch the movie, I'm like, yeah. This battleship of a great white shark is just gonna go click, 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 and barely take the drag out of this line. <laughs> oh, this definitely looks like it. Oh, I see lots of cars. As I pulled up the driveway to meet Bobby, I saw the Kiss bus, vintage news van, a bunch of old checkered taxis, and an amazing prisoner bus. This is going to be crazy. Hey, how we doing? I'm Larry. Hey, Larry. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Larry. Hi, nice to meet you, Darlene. Take a look. There's a couple of cars around. Try to squeeze through here with me. Oh, wow. Old school taxis. That's from The Irishman. There was many of those around. Yes. The movie Irishman? Yep. Wow. And many other shows besides that. What's this the deal? The Irishman as well. Yeah. And the new Tyson movie. We're going to go inside and take a look at that. With uh, This was Charles Manson. As he was moving this bus, we have pictures of him inside the bus. Like the real Charles yep. Manson. The real Charles Manson. And his name is insignia in the, in the uh, criminally insane booth. It's unlocked. Um... You don't have to let them out once you get them in yeah, there. Yeah, I know, right? This here? No. Look right down in front of you. Right here. It says Charles. It says... Oh, it's right here, Charles. Charlie. 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 I love limousines, big cars, big trucks, 500 cars all together. Holy jeez. Uh, that color would pop like that. Vans. Yeah, a couple of people got killed in that car, unfortunately. <laughs> what, what's the backstory? Like, what, how did this all get started? They were selling a bunch of cars, and I love old cars and antiques, and, uh, and I saw a Cougar, I saw some of the checkers that were outside, and I said, I want to buy them. He goes, I'll tell you the truth, uh, he said, I gotta get these all gone quickly, like tomorrow. I said, let's make a deal, I'll buy them all. We bought about 50 or 60 cars. In one shot. In one, one shot. shot. Um, so that started all from there, doing the right thing, when no room for excuses, no sick, and we did the right thing, and we, Got on to hundreds of other shows since then, and big movies, big movies, big TV Movie, shows. TV, uh, commercials. Netflix, yeah. all that kind Netflix, of thing. Netflix. Yep. Uh, From a few cars, we now have close to 500 cars. Oh my gosh. To see the full tour, click the link above for the behind the scenes Ammo Studio channel. There are so many amazing stories, you gotta check it out. But he has cars from so many different movies as well, from Cadillacs to Hearst to police bus wagons, Bentleys, H1 Hummers, golf carts. Here, here's your scoop of, uh, Moldy chocolate right there. It is amazing how much goes into a movie. Yes. Oh, it really is. Now, last but not least in this area, why do you have a standard F-150 back here? Well, it's more than just a standard F-150. Holy uh, jeez. JBL system. And if you look in here, these are TVs I keep them covered up in case I wash it. On hydraulics. Oh, yeah, look, huge flat screen TVs. A smoker in here that runs smoke and... What, uh, what, wh why? A little bit of pain in the butt to get out. Darlene here, my buddy, my partner in crime. You want to help me uh, do some work? Do what we got to do. There's stuff way back there. We need it for a big movie coming up. <laughs> well, get that one out. Let's get over to your place, Larry, and see what you can do on it and do some Larry magic on it. All right, F-150. Consider yep. it done, my man. This is Thank exciting. You. I appreciate this. So with that, Bobby and Darlene played musical cars to squeeze out the truck and start the trek back to the studio. The spiders had their way with this thing, as we saw when we pulled it outside. 
Here we go. Once inside and under the inspection lights at the studio, it's clear this truck had spent a considerable amount of time outside and under a tree. The seams are covered in leaves and twigs, and the paint has some topical damage from months or maybe even years of contamination sitting on the surface in the sun. Of course, it's a black car. It heats up and cools down, and the paint expands and contracts, making the dirt fall deeper and deeper into the pores of the paint. Inside wasn't necessarily a disaster, but definitely in need of some love, especially with all the electronics in the back. In other words, the paint is going to need a little bit more than just a basic wash, despite it not being really swirled out. So a lot of you have asked me what my e-commerce platform is, and that, of course, is Shopify. I've been using Shopify for about three years, even though I started my company over 12 years ago. So I have a lot of experience using other ones, and they were okay, but my real sort of pain point for me was the back-end work, meaning I constantly had to be updating and changing and doing all these things to the website, which took me away from filming really cool cars. So the big thing for me three years ago is I said, okay, I have to change this around to allow the time for me to go away and do all these amazing fun things that I've always wanted to do with respect to videos and so I switched to Shopify. Why? For me personally it was just way easier. The management of putting a product online and then selling a product, the spread between the two of them was absolutely simple compared to the other ones for me. So if you're thinking about starting a company and you're starting from whatever it may be, shoes or chairs or products like the ones over here, taking it from a concept all the way to something that's online and being sold, that space in between the two of them, there's a lot of things that need to be done. Shopify simplifies it. So for all you entrepreneurs out there, it is an absolute game changer. I have a 14 day free trial down below, click the link and check it out. As always guys, thanks so much for supporting the channel. Now back to the episode. Our first step is obviously going to be power washing it, but there's a little bit of a catch here. You can see the seams right here are really, really tight, but there's some openings as well, meaning if I power wash it, water's gonna go in. So instead, we're gonna be using frothy anti-salt and sort of scoop it out. Let me show you why. Inside the trunk area here, the bed, uh, two ginormous speakers. We have a ton of electrical wires and amps and all kinds of things. But if you look up in here, there's a little bit of daylight and that daylight's gonna leak some water onto two massive flat screen TVs and we definitely don't wanna get them wet. So we're gonna be using frothy on the back area. First, I filled the Pro Foamer Reservoir with one bottle of frothy anti-salt, then added approximately two gallons of water to the reservoir. Once it was full, then you could either pump with the handle or simply attach the compressed air to the male end that comes on the foamer itself for easy compression. Afterwards, I sprayed the seams and the top of the tonneau cover and just let it soak. It's kind of hard to see, but there was so much dirt and mud compacted into the tonneau cover. On the top, it also smelled really bad as well. So this thing was a hot mess. Very moldy, sort of like this old fish tank water is the best way I can describe it. While the back area was soaking with frothy, I let the pressure washer do all the work to remove the top layer of grime and make sure when you have a car like this, don't forget the door jams. Everything was compacted in there, so use the pressure to kind of push everything out. Next, I got the foam soap and boost anti-salt additive because I had no idea what season this car was left outside, so it could be very salty for all I know. I filmed the foam gun and soaked the paint and engine just to kind of soften up all the junk. While waiting for the soapy marinade to do its thing, I cleaned up the rims, which was really awesome because it had next to no miles. I think it has like 10,000 miles, especially on a 2017 truck. So the before and after is absolutely amazing when you remove the contamination. Up next was a heavy wash with the blue microfiber wash towel and of course a brush. Now I'm washing a bit harder and more aggressive because it just needs it. Plus I'm planning on polishing the paint later to help remove any embedded grime that I can't remove with the wash. So keep that in mind.
On the engine, I used a bit of degreaser in some areas, but overall, because the engine was covered by the hood, it was actually in pretty good shape, besides a little bit of acorns and some rodent poop and urine. After the pressure wash, I went back in and reapplied frothy and used the interior brush to scrub the seams a little bit more aggressively. Okay, now the car is clean. You can see I took my wash mitt back. I'm going to wipe the panel like this. Why? Because, do you hear that? Clearly there's contamination everywhere. This car obviously sat outside before they put it back into the warehouse. We're gonna clay now, why? I'm going to polish later on, but if you clay now versus using the machine later, it's gonna save you a whole bunch of time because when you're polishing, you're gonna be picking up that contamination just like you would with this. But I'm gonna have a heavy machine in my hand. I'm gonna have to blow it out, turn back on here. You're gonna be blowing it out more times versus just using this, just like this. And you're gonna use quick motion. I, with my left hand, I squeeze. Get a little bit of lubrication. Again, the, the paint was already wet. And I'm just gonna re-soap it up. And now, look at that. You can't hear that? Totally different. So this is gonna save us a bunch of time when we go to polish the paint. After a thorough cling, I power washed the soap off the car, dried with compressed air. And I have to tell you, compressed air is your best friend on cars, especially ones that have really bad seams and crevices like this one here. A little later, when Bobby gave me the okay, I removed the tonneau cover to make life a little bit easier as long as I kept water away from all the wires. He was very adamant about that. With it on the ground, I covered the material in soap and scrubbed the heck out of it with a dual density scrub brush to release the smell of mold. And I have to tell you, it was incredibly smelly just for this little thing. If you look on the inside and underneath, it had white spores everywhere. This right here is mold. There's junk coming out of this, dude. Look at that, ugh. Next, I removed the sheets covering the TVs, started the truck, and turned on the inverter in the back seat to generate the power to lift the TVs up. At this point in the process, I just wanted them to open so that I can clean them properly. Later on, we'll see if this thing works. Okay, so here's how this thing works. There is an up and down, and there's an out and in. And as this comes up, because of the bed here, you kind of have to push it out a little bit and then come this way, then out a little bit and come this way. Check this out. Boom. Oh my gosh, look back here. There is a smoke machine. All right, well. On the TV screens, I used Obey screen and glass cleaner with a thick microfiber towel first, then a thin glass towel last for the final wipes. Inside, I emptied out the garbage first before using compressed air to move the trapped Molding dirt from all the seams feet. and underneath the seats. Then I vacuumed everything up. plastic and leather, I cleaned it with ammo lather, a brush, and even the mini woolly for all the vents.
There was one coffee stain on the driver's side carpet that was being a bit more stubborn than everything else, so I used a specific coffee and juice cleaner with a lower pH called siphon. Again, it's always best to attack a stain sooner than later as they become harder and harder to remove over time. If that's not possible, then you do need to use very specific products, in this case a lower pH, to attack the coffee stain. Anyhow, with the leather done, I scrubbed the floor mats with Titan degreaser and soaked the high traffic areas like the seat, the door, and the steering wheel in Restore to kill bacteria and disinfect the truck's interior prior to renting it out for its next gig. FYI, after two minutes of it sitting wet, wipe dry with a microfiber towel, but please be sure to read the directions thoroughly prior to using it. Lastly, I protected the interior with mousse in case it sits outside again in the sun and degrades. Be sure to buff it off to a dull finish after a few minutes of penetration, but this will give you some UV protection. Okay, now at this point in the process, the interior has been cleaned, disinfected, and now protected. We're working on the outside. It's not that bad. It's got about 10,000 miles, but it did live underneath a tree. So we're gonna have to do a one-step polish with a yellow foam pad and some yellow foam pad polish. Now, the interesting thing is Bobby gets more requests for darker color cars. Why? Because the body lines are more pronounced and they look great, but on the flip side, so are the scratches. They're more pronounced. Now, a big question that I get is, hey, does a black colored car versus a white colored car, does that get more scratch? And the answer is no, they equally get scratched, but one is black and one is white. So I'm gonna give you an example here. We're gonna pretend this white out is a scratch just for demonstration purposes. We have a black part, we have a white part here. We're gonna take that scratch, put it all the way across. Take a look at that. You can see the contrast, the scratch against the black. It looks more pronounced. I'm gonna do the same thing on the white, even bigger. So you can see it's not as visible. So that's what's really going on. They're equally getting scratched, but it's just the background, which I thought was pretty cool. So we're gonna polish this thing up and get it ready for the movies. With the paint now all cleaned up, I polished the metal by hand with the same abrasive I used on the paint. It's a concoction I've been testing for a while. I'll have more information when it's ready. Finally, I added Reflex Pro to the paint, allowed it to flash after a minute or so, and removed with a microfiber towel. For the trim, I added Frame Pro in the towelettes to bring back some depth, but more importantly for the protection aspect, just in case it gets moved back outside into the yard after its upcoming shoot. Next, for the glass, I used a long handle razor blade to cut through the heavy grime sitting on the surface of the glass. If you hold the handle at about a 45 to 50 degree angle, you can clean up the contaminated and rough surface easily before wiping with a towel. Just be sure to use your window cleaner as a lubricant if you choose to do this. And after a bit of tire dressing, it was now time to play with the system. Okay, now that we're all done, it looks absolutely amazing, but I've been dying to do one thing, and that, of course, is to play with all the electronics in the back. So let's get this thing started, push buttons, and see if it works. Okay, step number one, done. Now, I had an old inverter in my old detailing van, and that would kick the pump so I could spray uh, cars down in the parking lot. So I know that much, turn it on, Okay, that's on. 
And this is on, you see the green light right there? Hello, ho. Ho, we have power. One, two, three, four, five on today's episode. I have no idea what movie this is. Hello, hello, check one, two, three, four, five. The only thing that we're missing right now is Steve across the way right there. Steve, hello Steve, paging Steve, paging Steve. Oh, looks like he's working on something. Come on over Steve. The only thing left to do is to go freak out Steve. Time to play. Bring beer. Why is this so hard to turn? This is living, my man. <laughs> Only thing left to do, get the party started. <laughs> the next day, the truck looked amazing once the coating cured. It was a total turnaround, and it's now ready to get back in front of the camera. So I called Bobby and Darlene from Auto King Picture Cars to come pick her up for the upcoming movie. I can't wait to see how this is gonna work, huh? Yeah. Hello? Ah, yeah. enter. Good to see how you, man. How are you? I'm good. good. There she is. Wow, wow. that good is good unbelievable. All right. Come on in. Wow. What a mirror finish. Awesome job. Did you know it was black the whole time? <laughs> no, I never seen it look like that. Piece of uh, wow, look. on his door. Oh, look at that. See? Come over here for a minute. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> I know, right? Unreal. Look at this thing. So basically, it's like a prop in the background or something or some yeah. like unique thing in the video. It's used for a lot of different things. Plus, it has a smoker in it, which I love. Too. Yeah, well, I, I may or may not have figured out how to use that. Yes, thank you. We have you know, a couple of more cars, like maybe a couple of hundred more cars that yeah. we need to get done. I think we can make that happen. I hope you can help us out. because uh, You got yourself a deal. I don't have the energy to keep going, so <laughs> we need you. Well, guys, there you go. The sound stage truck is all done, ready to go back into Bobby's fleet to be rented out for commercials and movies. Now, if you saw a car in his entire collection that you think would be awesome on the show that we should detail, leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.